Hey, good morning guys. I'm the Tech Prepper. So I want to thank um, all the new subscribers. I posted a video the other day that, uh, at least for my channel, went somewhat viral in terms of the, the views and we picked up about 50 subscribers. Um, I don't know if that new set of subscribers is necessarily into ham radio. Uh, that's going to be the topic of today's episode, but I think it is important. And I think what I want to do um, to help out the new subscribers uh, cater to a lot of the current uh, subscribers we have is take a look at uh, trying to bring people into the hobby. And I started, uh, I think, two and a half years ago in ham radio, amateur radio, and I had a bit of a hard time, and I'm actually playing quite a bit of catch up. So for you guys, I just wanted to show you uh, kind of what ham radio is about uh, by talking about emergency communications and an experience I had on Monday, a positive one. Uh, but before we get started, uh, this was the first radio that I had purchased before I got licensed. Uh, it is the Baofeng UV5R. It's a really inexpensive uh, radio. I highly recommend it for people who are not sure about the hobby. And I'll link to it in my Amazon store. But what I want to do is when we hit 400 subscribers, I'm going to send a brand new complete inbox UV5R uh, for somebody on the channel. So stay tuned for that. I think we're about 60 subscribers away. So that should be fairly quickly given the current rate of growth. Um, so yeah, this is just a big thank you to all the new subscribers, everybody who's with the channel. And then I just want to get people into the hobby. So I'll probably do a follow-up video once we get close to 400. Um, so let's talk about the experience I had uh, on Monday, just a few days back. Uh, so I had a lot of mic fright when I first started to get into ham radio, and I actually did not get on the air for almost a year and a half. And I just want to let you know, it's not that bad. And I found an excellent resource, uh, at least in my area, and uh, what I'm doing is I'm attending local nets. And all a net is is a predefined uh, frequency, uh, day of week, and time where ham radio operators get together um, and chat. There is a bit of protocol depending on which net you join, uh, but it's a good opportunity to uh, get accustomed to uh, the, the protocol for uh, being on air. The net that I joined in particular, or in particular, is uh, really quite interesting. It is the Arizona Emergency Net in Maricopa County. And I'll put a link below in the description for anybody that's um, interested. One second, guys. And uh, what's nice about that net is, one, unlike the other nets, it's geared around emergency preparedness, communications, and training. And two, I personally found it to be very friendly to outsiders. And it is a place of learning. It's a safe place I found uh, where they actually do help you if you slip on your protocol. And it's highly interactive. Um, and I'll let, um, I'll show you a quick clip here of about maybe a minute or less from the net control operator, Paul, who did a fantastic job. And uh, let you give the introduction, Paul. they might help us. We're going to do an exercise that will require you to use an on-air capability. I'm going to take check-ins tonight by calling for a number of stations with specific capabilities and resources. If you have that capability but aren't able to check in as part of the group I call, don't worry. You can check in with a different capability or at the end when I'll take all remaining stations who wish to check in tonight. There are plenty of assignments for everyone to participate. I'll give each station that checks in a specific task. After the exercise portion of tonight's net, we'll meet back on these Metrolink repeaters and discuss how each of the different resources could benefit us in a public service or incident response situation. All right, guys. So uh, the topic was um, on-air resources night. And uh, what we basically set out to do was have a number of tasks uh, assigned to everybody who checked in. And based on their station capabilities, they were tasked with um, either uh, trying to send an email via WinLink 
uh, trying to uh, make a contact on a uh, repeater that was outside of our linked repeater system, uh, make a contact on HF, uh, work outside of the amateur radio bands using FRS or GMRS. Um, so a lot of fun. Um, and the goal there was just to see how quickly, you know, we were able to make a contact for emergency communications. Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and hand it back over to, to Paul and he'll walk through the tasks that were assigned. And then I'm going to go ahead and jump into, uh, you know, the protocol that I used and, uh, what my task was. The name is Gaston. Acknowledge KT1 RUN. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is Kilo Tango 1 Romeo Uniform November calling CQ, CQ, CQ. I was tasked with finding the highest uh, HF contact. I am a technician class license, so that limits me to 10 meters and single sideband voice at 28.3 to 28.4 uh, megahertz. I scanned for a couple minutes and was not picking up anything. And then I just sat on the calling frequency 28.4 megahertz to try some CQs, did not receive anything. Went back to scanning for a bit and then since I spend most of the time on digital modes for FT8, I decided to see if the 10 meter band was open by going down to 28 megahertz 0 0.074, and there was not a whole lot of uh, chatter going on there. Double checked it with PSK Reporter online, and there were no other nodes in my area, so it may be a fact that I have a QRP rig operating five watts. Switched back one last time to the 28.4 megahertz band, and tried CQ to no avail. KT1, RUN. Well, thank you, Gaston, for that report. I uh, appreciate your tenacity in uh, trying a number of different modes and a number of uh, different frequencies, in the, at least in the 10 meter band, uh, to see what you can do given your capability. Uh, excellent report, thank you. All right, guys, so um, in recap, that was a really fun exercise uh, for me um, that went on for about an hour. Everybody went ahead and gave the reports. Um, I learned quite a bit uh, from that. Personally, um, what was successful uh, for me on that? Uh, first thing was I ran off the grid. I was testing my uh, new battery solar system. Uh, during the day, uh, the system was topped off with solar and I was running uh, basically the whole hour with no issues off of battery power. Uh, the second thing I was able to do was switch between, or practice switching between uh, VHF, UHF, and HF um, pretty, pretty quickly, and also switching between a couple of different modes of operation, uh, primarily single sideband voice and digital on uh, FT8. Um, I did realize that, and I've known this for a while, that at least with my setup, um, HF on 10 meters and low power, like I'm running, is not great for emergency communications. Uh, in my mind, VHF, UHF with the repeaters is absolutely the way to go. Um, having the handy talkies or those cheap uh, blister pack radios, uh, the FRS, GMRS radios, um, 
are also great for uh, hams interacting with non-hams. Um, so yeah, a lot of cool experiences. Uh, one area I do want to get into is APRS. I do a lot of backpacking, so it'd be nice to be able to um, have some level of GPS tracking uh, while I'm out there. Uh, so that was kind of interesting. I have, have looked into it, but I really haven't spent a whole lot of time with, with APRS. All right, guys, so I uh, hope everybody who's just recently joined the channel is still uh, enjoying the content. I'm trying to mix it up uh, across a variety of topics. Um, there is an area I want to get into for the next video. I don't know how well received it's going to be, uh, but I do want to talk about a couple of things that new uh, firearm owners are likely forgetting, and I'm going to spoil it right now. I believe it is holsters and a good belt. And then kind of third um, is their cleaning kit. So that'll probably be the next video up there. And then we're going to go ahead and revisit a larger solar system. All right, everybody, be strong, be safe, be prepared. This is the Tech Prepper.